Hi everyone and welcome back to Koala's Creep In, my little nook in the world wide web of the internet. <laughs> and I specify that because uh, the, the web is a concept in Nordic shamanism where we, it's, it's the world, it's the world wide web that we go into into the dream time and pull strings and cut cords and uh, you know all that shamanic stuff so it's uh, important to specify the world wide web of internet <laughs> so um welcome and before i go into today's topic please like and subscribe you can of course wait with uh, liking after the video if you want to uh, but please subscribe for more content about the runes and shamanism and uh, yeah all sorts of things spiritually related so today i'm i was invited by the runes this morning to talk about the dark side of the rune Barkana. so i'm gonna bring out uh, but Hanna, see if I can find her amongst all the 24, 25 runes. Well, she's she doesn't want to be found, I think. Where's the ones? And I say she. Oh, yeah, okay, so my camera is sleeping apparently. Um so I say she because this rune is connected to the Earth Mother. Where is where are you? Oh you my dear. It's the Earth Mother's rune, you might say. Seriously, it's not here. Oh, of course it's not here. You know why? Because Perkana is the rune I'm currently working with. I'm currently walking with through life. So it's, uh, of course it's not here, it's on my windowsill at the moment. So I'll just pause and go get her. Okay, so here she is. I hope it's the right way. It's supposed to be like a B with uh, like a, I don't know the word in English for like this <laughs> in sweden if we say in sweden we say kantig uh, et kantigt b a sharp b maybe okay so i think my camera is actually kind of dying i thought it was um the connection between the camera and the computer at first but i'm starting to wonder if i just dropped it or something at some point so anyway to do today i'm gonna be talking about the dark side of verkana because the runes this morning invited me to go into the darkness so and th so i thought you were you 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 should um, come with me in this uh, during this process see a little bit about how I because sometimes when I work with the runes I just go in inside inwards and just you know let it flow I just uh, because I love using a video diary okay to to come to insights and to work with my own shadows and that sort of thing and to just let it flow so i probably won't go super duper deep please camera can you just hold on hold on baby hold on come in and um okay so i probably won't go super duper deep that means I probably won't do like a journey or meditation or anything like that. I will just talk. Um, 
but that's a part of the process to just when I when you if a rune does something like this and I'm not I don't immediately understand what it means because okay so I draw some runes this morning I drew um and this question I asked was how can I create or shape my life uh my own life during the coming week and I got Bekana and I got it reversed. So instead of this, I got her like this. And uh, she said, uh, and I got the words, uh, the dark side of Bekana, explore it, let yourself free from needing and from the shackles of being an empath. So I thought that was kind of interesting because sometimes of most often immediately i'm like oh yeah yeah okay thank you and i can see before me if it's gonna be like in a ceremony of some kind like let something go set myself free and today all i could see was this this me talking to you guys about um about this and the, the dark side of being a, being an empath uh, because this is the rune I mostly connect with being being an empath. Because Bekana is the Earth Mother's rune. It's uh, the rune that has all the qualities of the Earth Mother. The, the, the holding, the grounding, and also empathy. Like being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Or um, like being an empath is... It, taking on other people's emotions and energies and even thoughts sometimes uh, as if they were your own, but it's not. And uh, most empaths, I think, see, I hope both, or most empaths see both the, the gift and the curse about it. And so it's, it's not just a curse to most people, I hope. But I, I, I have worked with people that has mostly seen it as a curse. Um, so I see it as both, um, for sure, because the good side of being an empath is being able to, on a higher level than, uh, than most people, uh, sense when someone is, uh, just knowing and sensing when you walk into a room and you cannot just sense the atmosphere, like most empathic people can walk into a room and sense the, the joy or the sadness. You can tell if you're entering a room for a funeral or a wedding or a party or, you know, that sort of thing. And you can go into a room and talk, sense the, the tension if there's been a fight and that sort of thing. I'm assuming because I'm an empath, so I'm not I'm not quite sure actually what only empathetic people do, you know, because I know I know some of the differences, of course, because I've I've been working with and detangling being an empath for so long and working with other empaths and helping them. But uh most people that have some sort of empathy. Please, camera. I am here for you. You are here for me. Come on. I'm just going to shut it off for a moment. And see if I can. <sighs> if that helped. No. No, it didn't. I don't know what you see. Okay, so I'm going to have to change cameras, guys. So I'm going to pause. Okay, so welcome back to less pretty me. <laughs> because this is what you see when I don't use my good camera. This used to be my good camera. A Logitech. But I don't know what's, what, what, what ails it. I don't know what ails it. Okay, so uh, where was I? Yeah, okay, so I, I believe 
that most people with empathy can uh, with your gut or intuition or whatever you want to call it uh, when you talk to someone you can sense if they are sad if they are uh, and that sort of thing however i know that that autistic people for instance can't immediately tell if someone is sad or upset or or that depending on your autism of course but it's very common that autistic people or people with uh, on the spectrum like asperger's or something like that can't immediately tell um and that has nothing to do with their their ability their empath empathic ability they can still i believe after working with a lot of autistic people um because a lot of autistic people have uh, uh, like spiritual gifts and uh, i worked with a lot of autistic people um in my spiritual practice and i believe that they uh, the empathy is uh, is there it's um, often higher than in other people but the, it the same uh, it's like the same um, this is just my experience okay this is my take on it as a as a shamanic practitioner and as someone who's been working with with several uh, autistic people spiritually my take on it is that there's some kind of gap between what's what's coming in and then the processing of it so there's a gap between like what's coming in and what's being experienced due to some kind of of uh, lack in the in the interpretation for autistic people that doesn't mean they don't have empathy they have a high degree of empathy most most of the times of course there's um the same variation as in the normal population <laughs> so i'm not saying that every autistic person is an empath that's not what i'm saying uh, there are just as many psychopaths that are autistic that aren't okay maybe not maybe not maybe not I, I I think that there are not. <laughs> I think no. <laughs> no. But my point is that the opposite of an empath is a psychopath. And aut autism it has nothing to do with it. Okay. We figure we, we, we set that. Uh, yeah. So. Um, yeah. A lot of people think it's only a curse and it can feel like even a bigger curse if you have some problem with social skills like uh, like if you're autistic or or if you have some other kind of uh, uh, diagnosis way that that makes it hard for you to cope in everyday life and um, uh, it can feel like a curse to be an empath more so i think and the curse of being an empath is, in my experience, mostly when you're not really aware that you are and you think that everything that you are carrying is your own. But it can also be a curse to know that you're an empath and not accept that you have your own emotions and feelings because it's not black or white. It's not that it's either yours or theirs. Because sometimes there has to be something in us to be able to be susceptible to the other person's SHIT, you know? So, uh, and sometimes we as empaths definitely project onto others and think that they are feeling what we are actually feeling. And we think that, oh, this is their SHIT that we are taking on but it doesn't belong to me so you see it can be like a, 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 a very much an entanglement of emotions and energies and feelings and I think the, the gift of being an empath is to be able to sense energies and sense emotions and feelings in other people and be able to read a room like like that uh, and uh, even so 
on a distance and you can have connections with people on a deeper level or with animals on a deeper level that not other people have because of your your deep sense of empathy and your deep sense of of uh, uh, sensing the energies because that's kind of what I think empathy is with emotions what telepathy is with thoughts so tele telepathy telepathy I don't know how to pronounce that correctly um, so I believe that the gift of being an empath is very very great it's it's especially when you have worked with yourself and gained the tools that help you drain yourself of negative energy okay so so some of the key elements of being an empath is one being able to to empty yourself of other people's emotions and being able to fill yourself up with with light and uh, a positive um, energy uh often <laughs> not just at the end of the day like often depending on what you do for a living and how your days look and etc and also another key to being an empath uh, and a successful one is to just let it flow through you and not let it attach you know so that's when you, when empathy is a gift it just flows through you and you can also interpret it very well very fast so that when you are receiving an emotion or an or an energy you can sense oh this is what that is thank you very much goodbye <laughs> and you can still be empathic towards another human being you can you can feel their sorrow or grief and be like okay it's not mine it's hers thank you very much and then hold that person because you really 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 know what they are feeling it's not just it's not it's not just empty words it's not just a cliche or it's not just because you went through the same thing because uh, often we talk about the fact that we have to walk in someone else's shoes to be able to comprehend what they are going through and empath doesn't need that because when we receive the emotion when we receive the energy we receive the full story so to speak and it it is often as if we were uh, going through it ourselves in that moment which is where it becomes a curse so uh, when we when we are not able to just let it f flow through and uh, empty ourselves of the negative and fill us up fill us, ourselves up with the positive uh that's when it becomes a curse that's like the dark side of being an empath being a sponge to everything and even reliving other people's anxiety and sorrow and grief and sadness and just letting it uh, it eat us whole that's that's the dark side of it to just go into the void uh, because other people are in the void and they drag us along with them and we can't just look down into the void and say oh there's a void here i understand why you are upset or why you are depressed or why you are the way you are right now uh thank you <laughs> i can hold you when you are there but i don't want to go there when we are the dark side of being an empath and not being able to control it, it that's when we are like oh there's a void. there's a void and we're just sucked into it and then spit out the other side and being like how far did we fall how many limbs are still here is my heart whole what what the f happened you know so um that's like the dark side of being an empath to just being eaten whole and then spit out and no one holds us because there is no one there to hold us because we give it all we give our our whole selves to other people but we don't get the equal amount of love and care back and of course the the darkest relationships we can have are with narcissistic or psychopathic people uh, because they really know how to chew us <laughs> they don't just swallow us whole oh no they chew 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 
and then they spit us out and we are not worth anything in their eyes and remember that in their eyes okay we are worth plenty we're worth the world the universe we're worth love and light and and relationships and and everything we want and need we are worth it to the rest of the world and to ourselves um because the dark side of being an empath is believing how other people see us that that is us that because they see us in one way and we can sense how they feel how they see us we believe that that is the truth it's not the truth it's not my truth it's not your truth it's their truth it's their truth what how they see us are it's not even a tooth i want to spit at it i want to spit the truth <laughs> their truth because it's just one person's point of view and it's a point of view that is um that is you know due to their experiences their personality especially if they are a narcissist or a psychopath or a sociopath or whatever they have a very negative point of view towards other people and they are here and we are there um so that that's how they look at everyone we are not what they look we are not what they think we are uh, and the dark side of being an empath is allowing ourselves to 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 become the void and to become all the dark thoughts and emotions and create our own dark thoughts and emotions out of other people's dark thoughts and dark emotions because we sense the energy right but the thoughts are our own so uh okay so if we have a telepathic ability oh telepathic yeah uh then of course some of the thoughts are not our own um but but that's another video, you guys. <laughs> that's another video. An empath senses the emotions, senses the energies in the room from different people. We can see if someone ha is depressed. We can sense if they are in a, in, a, in a void or in darkness, if they are in a good place, if they're happy, if they have sorrow, etc. But the thoughts about that and that are born from that is, is our own. And those are depending on how we feel about ourselves and that can be a product of our environment or upbringing or whatever and those are the, th the thoughts we need to work on ourselves and that is the start to being able to discern what is others and what is mine and how can i let it flow through me and how can i uh, don't let it bother me um and I promise you it's not easy, but being a successful empath is so worth the work. Uh, it truly, truly is. So, yeah, that's the video for today. <laughs> and uh, I will see you another time. And uh, yeah, next week. And you know where to find me if you have any questions. Look in the description box. I will see you when I see you. So walk in beauty and shingling.